Welcome to Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. In this release, we'll show you how to use the multi body modeling functionality in Solid Edge. Multi body modeling is a design method which uses more than one solid design body in a single part or sheet metal file. In multi body modeling, you can design many separate models in the same space and according to the same set of rules. This modeling method provides the ability to model many components of an assembly as a single part or sheet metal file. When more than one design body exists in a part or sheet metal file, the Pathfinder displays additional collectors. You use these collectors to manage design bodies. The main collector is named Design Bodies. All solid design bodies reside in this collector. Design Bodies can be published as separate bodies when the design is complete. Design Bodies can be a part or sheet metal model type, and they can contain both ordered and synchronous features. A part design body can contain a single solid or disjoint solid but sheet metal design bodies do not support disjointed solids. Any added new design bodies share the existing material properties of the initial design body. User can switch a design body to a construction body. When you change the design body type to construction, a construction body's collector displays. You can turn the display on or off for any design or construction body. The construction body's display is turned off by default in an assembly or draft file. Construction bodies display with the construction color, which is purple. Construction bodies do not publish. Only one design body can be active. All other bodies are inactive. You can only add or remove features on the active design body. You can make the selected design body active using the activate part body command. The environment shifts and displays the tool ribbon for the active body type. The active design body displays in the normal part colors. Inactive design bodies display with an opaque color. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. Here I have a previously created synchronous part for this demonstration. To turn this into a multi body part, I first select the Add Body command. In the Add Body dialog, I can enter specific names or use the default names provided by the system. In this example, I'll use the default names. Notice that the existing model color has become opaque. I'll start by creating a synchronous sketch. If you are not familiar with the synchronous modeling, not to worry since the multi-body modeling works the same way in both paradigms. Once I have used the project to sketch command to capture the bottom of the sketch, I will use the offset command to create the top of the sketch. I will then use the line command to add some lines at each end. I'll then employ the trim command to complete the sketch. Next, I'll use the extrude command to create the base feature of the second part. Notice that this part is solid in color, meaning that this is the active design body. If we expand the design bodies header, you can see that we now have two design bodies. Notice that I can right mouse button click on the active design body in the Pathfinder and use the toggle design construction command on the shortcut menu 
to convert the design body to a construction body. To convert this back to a design body, I can right mouse button click on the construction body on the display screen and use the toggle design construction command again from the shortcut menu. Users can also right mouse button click on the inactive design body from the pathfinder and select the activate body command to activate it. By default, the previously active body becomes inactive. If you want to edit a design body, you must first make sure that it is the active body. Once the design body is active, you can modify it as you would normally. If I save this part, I would then have a multi-body part. This slide illustrates the location of the multi-body commands. The add body and multi-body publish commands are located on the ribbon bar on the add body flyout menu. The activate, toggle, and show commands are located on the shortcut menu, which is activated by a right mouse button click over the design or construction body pathfinder entries. When placing a multi-body part into an assembly, the resulting multi-bodies are represented as a single entry in the assembly pathfinder and on a bill of materials. An entire assembly could be represented as a single multi-body part. Sometimes the assembly is more important than the actual components that make up the assembly. In multi-body modeling, you may want to have each design body reside in an individual file. Users can use the multi-body publish command to write each design body of a multi-body file into a separate file. The command also provides the option to create an assembly using the multi-body publish parts. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. I have returned to my multi-body part where I use the name multibody.par. I'll just make sure that I have saved the latest version of this file. If I wish to save this as individual parts, I select the multi-body publish command. In the multi-body publish dialog, I can see that I have two design bodies. The file names have been generated based on the design body names I selected in the add body command. The location defaults to the same location as my multibody.par file. I can also toggle on the create assembly option and the system will save the multibody.par file as an assembly. When I am satisfied with the names and locations, I select Save Files and the system generates the individual files in the assembly. I can then close the dialog. If I open the folder that these files were saved in, you can see the saved multi-part, the newly created assembly file, and the two individual design body part files. In multi-body modeling, users can apply certain features to multiple bodies with a single command. Solid Edge supports the following features on multiple solids as part of a single feature creation. Linear cut, revolved cut, rounds, chamfers, holes but only in the ordered paradigm, and patterns and mirrors of multi-body features. In multi-body modeling, you can control how a cutout feature interacts with the design bodies it intersects. When the model contains multi-bodies, the body selection option is available on ordered cut, revolved cut, and whole commands. In synchronous, the option is available when you perform a linear or revolved cut operation. Users can select the cut active body or the cut selected bodies option. Only a single feature node is created in the Pathfinder for multi-body features. For linear cuts, all extent types are valid except the through next type. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. I have returned to my multi-body part 
where I will add some holes to connect the two components. Since multi-body holes are not supported in the synchronous paradigm, I will switch to the ordered paradigm. I'll select the hole command and then select the hole options where I'll pick a 5 mm simple hole. I will use the default finite depth option and value and click OK. Next, I'll place the holes on the top face of the active design body. Once I've placed the holes, I'll close the sketch. Notice that a body selection step has been added to the vertical command bar. Here you can choose the cut active body option or choose the select the cut bodies option. Currently the select cut body is the default and the second design body has automatically been selected. If there was more than two bodies, you would have to select the bodies that you want to cut. I'll accept this and click Finish. Notice that the holes are placed in both design bodies. But on the Pathfinder, there is only a single hole feature. Since I changed the design bodies, I'll need to republish them to update the individual parts that I previously published. To do this, I select the multi-body publish command again. I get a warning reminding me that I must save the multi-body part. I click OK to save it. Notice that the dialog shows the parts and assembly are out of date. To update them, I click the Save Files button again. Everything is now updated and I can close the dialog. Want to learn more? Sign up to our customer portal at the link shown here, where you have access to knowledge-based articles, tips and tricks, how-to articles, and much more. If you need additional support, contact our support team at support at or call us at 1-877-215-8000.